Hello world, a fake Microsoft app somehow sneaks past Google moderators, pilfered user data and mined crypto. The FBI issues a flash alert regarding the Conti ransomware gang. Phones are getting better at thwarting Wi-Fi based tracking, but they're not quite perfect. And opportunistic attackers are taking advantage of vulnerabilities just minutes after they're announced. That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. A fake Google Chrome extension purporting to be made by Microsoft has somehow managed to sneak past moderators. Unbeknownst to its users, it contained a few hidden surprises. Going undiscovered in a store for about a month and downloaded roughly 400 times, the extension masqueraded as Microsoft Authenticator. It looked somewhat legit on the surface, though a quick check shows the developer name to be Extensions rather than Microsoft. It's also only had a three star rating, which might be a red flag for some. However, the legit Microsoft extension also has only about three stars, so that doesn't help. It's also not much help that Microsoft calls their actual password manager Microsoft Authenticator on every other platform other than Chrome, on which they call it autofill, for some reason creating ripe ground for social engineering tricks. In the now deleted reviews, users complained that the extension used a bunch of CPU resources, making some postulates that there was a sneaky crypto miner hidden within it. The extension also sent users to a malicious URL, which tried to fish login details. Obviously, people are confused as to how something so obviously fake to a trained eye managed to sneak into the store, especially when it's impersonating Microsoft. Does Google not check these things? Though it would be useful if there was an easy way to verify an extension's developer. Sure, for a genuine extension here, it says offered by Microsoft Corporation, but is this string unique? Why can't I click it to see other apps made by this dev? That might provide some reassurance. Also, a lot of these seemingly genuine Microsoft extensions have their developer contact email set to some fake looking Gmail address. Why? The only thing that makes this particular app look genuine is that it has over a million users. Surely an app with that many downloads can't be fake. Or maybe I'm giving them too much credit. Also, some of the reviews for this genuine Microsoft extension are duplicates. You know, I, I simply don't know what to believe anymore. The FBI's cyber division has issued a flash alert on the Conti ransomware gang. I've talked about this cybercrime group quite a bit on this channel. They're the ones responsible for that Irish hospital hack. And just a side note, I can't seem to find any evidence showing Conti has released that 700 gigabytes hospital data dump. They said they'd start making it public on Monday and today's Tuesday. So by all accounts, it looks like they may have been bluffing when they were threatening to drop it. Though if only because actually releasing the data would enrage authorities way more than they already are. Anyway, out of all ransomware attacks worldwide, Conti is responsible for 10% of them. This table, made by Coveware, shows all the popular ransomware variants sorted by market share. Market share, weird way to put it. Conti is only beaten by the Sodden Akibi ransomware, authored by the Revel Group, edging ahead with 14%. The FBI have identified 16 ransomware attacks by Conti, which targeted US healthcare providers and first responder networks. This includes law enforcement agencies, 911 dispatch centers, among others. 400 organizations worldwide have fallen victim to the group, which was only founded in July last year. This FBI flash update doesn't really seem to say much, other than provide some statistics and remind you to back up your data. In fairness, they do provide some useful advice, though one thing I've only just come across, and I realize I may be completely late to the party on this one, but FYI, controlled folder access on Windows only takes 10 seconds to set up. Once done, no programs will have access to certain folders such as documents or pictures, apart from those you manually specify. This seems to be a decent defense against ransomware, which for obvious reasons needs access to your files. It's a little annoying though, because you'll forget you'll have enabled it and be confused why Premiere Pro can't access documents, but it does provide a layer of protection. The PC security channel on YouTube demoed this defense against various ransomware strains, and it did a pretty good job of preventing encryption of the protected folders. Good news, a new study shows phones are getting a hell of a lot better at thwarting Wi-Fi based tracking. This tracking method works on the basis that phones have a unique MAC address, which is an identifier used to identify each Wi-Fi device. By keeping tabs on where this MAC address pops up throughout different networks, you can effectively track the location of a user. In fact, as of 2019, this method is used on the London Underground. It's used to decipher the journey you've taken, which stations you've visited, and how long it takes you to get from place to place, all in the name of analytics. In-person stores can also use this method of tracking to determine how often you visit and for how long. Attempts to defeat this 
tracking technique were first made a few years back when MAC randomization was introduced. However, a report in 2017 by US Navy researchers discovered widespread implementation flaws that largely made the whole system useless, as many devices were occasionally using their real static MAC addresses. Not only that, but by exploiting a flaw in the way chipsets handle control frames, the researchers were able to defeat all devices which used randomization, regardless of manufacturer. Anyway, fast forward to 2021, and those same researchers have found that things have improved quite a bit. Both Android and iPhone devices now readily use pre-association Mac randomization, which means when a device isn't connected to a network, but rather hunting around to find something to connect to, it'll randomize its address so it can't be tracked. Devices also now employ per-network Mac randomization, meaning phones will create a unique Mac address for each network they connect to. This does mean a device can still be tracked across the same network though like in a university, for example, but not between multiple networks. Though researchers aren't completely thrilled with these solutions and would prefer per connection addresses, meaning a phone would create a brand new MAC address each time it connects to a network, regardless of whether it is connected to it before. Manufacturers haven't implemented this, probably because networks kind of work on the assumption that each device has a static MAC address. If the same device's MAC randomly started changing, it could confuse some networks depending on their implementation. The researchers are a little frustrated that there's no consistent technique to solving this issue. Different manufacturers seem to be tackling the problem in different ways, leading to a very fragmented approach. However, to their delight, the researchers did make a positive discovery. You see, in the past, many phones used Wi-Fi for location tracking, even when you had Wi-Fi manually turned off. However, thankfully, this is no longer the case, for the most part. There are some exceptions to this, of course, like the Sony Xperia X Compact, which used Wi-Fi even when Wi-Fi was allegedly off. I'm going to count this as a non-issue. I would imagine Sony Xperia X Compact users are an endangered species, if not extinct. A new report from Palo Alto Networks details just how determined bad actors can be at attacking vulnerable systems. The research team monitored scans of 50 million IP addresses associated with 50 large businesses. They found that adversaries were scanning for vulnerabilities just 15 minutes after those vulnerabilities had been announced, and in some cases for more lucrative exploits, hackers were on the case in just 5 minutes. These days, computing power is so inexpensive that an attacker would only need to spend $10 to rent computing power to do an imprecise scan of the entire internet. Remote desktop servers were most targeted. Remote desktop is ripe ground for attack because it provides direct access to systems, well, obviously, often with admin level privileges. Luckily, these vulnerabilities are often quite easy to patch. A software update usually does the trick. However, these attack vectors are low hanging fruits for criminals. Why bother sending specially crafted spear phishing emails when you can just mass scan for severe vulnerabilities? If you get lucky, then you're in with relative ease. As the report explains, attackers have a significant edge, as they can perform scans every hour, or more frequently if needs be, whereas it can take a large business 12 hours on average to find vulnerable systems, with penetration tests only taking place once every quarter or so, and even those not being particularly comprehensive, large enterprises are particularly vulnerable. I'll make sure to link the full report in the description if you want a detailed read. Maltronics is a website run by myself where you can find an array of super cool pen testing products. Our gear is used in over 100 countries and you can get 10% off with code Satonic. Trusted by hobbyists, pen testers and educational institutions, you can learn more over at maltronics.com. If you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure to let me know in those comments and turn on sub notifications so you don't miss any hacking news. This scenes footage, make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.